So good afternoon, students. We'll start our new topic and new unit, unit number four, which is project monitoring and control. The first topic is supervision, record keeping, and records that are kept at the construction site. So the first one is project monitoring and control. And under that topic, the first subtopic is supervision. So the role of a site supervisor generally involves the management and supervision of a construction site in accordance with health and safety guidelines. So it is the responsibility of the site supervisor to access hazards, determine risks, conduct regular inspections, and maintain a safety program. So the site supervisor will typically work closely with site foreman who is responsible for organizing construction works on site and report to the project manager. Site in charges should have relevant experience in construction or civil engineering as well as appropriate health and safety training. So the responsibilities of a site in charge may include supervising workers, subcontractors and work activities preparing and presenting site inductions, safety briefings and toolbox talks, assessing and managing assessing and managing safety hazards, ensuring appropriate site rules and welfare facilities that are in place, carrying out regular inspections at the site and helping project managers to plan the work project work program. then helping to coordinate deliveries of materials, plants, and equipments, completing records for site reports, attending site management meetings, carrying out regular inspections to ensure compliance with relevant legal requirements, processes, and procedures, raising safety concerns at the appropriate level, resolving problems and implementing improvements, organizing and overseeing external inspections such as with health or safety inspector, and providing emergency first aid if and whenever required. Relevant skills of a site in charge includes the following, a positive attitude, the ability to communicate with, motivate, and if necessary, discipline the workforce that is the work team or the staff, the ability to understand drawings and other contract documents, a good understanding of safety procedures, first aid training, organizational skills, the ability to meditate to resolve issues, an understanding of legal responsibilities, an understanding of welfare and environmental issues, an understanding of occupational health and behavioral safety issues. The next topic is record keeping. So records are to be maintained at a construction site and it plays an important role in construction activity. It is the document required to prove any construction activity which has taken place at the site during the billing or any other claims in the future. So these records have all the data of various construction activities carried out at the site. So if any additional work has been carried out and it is claimed during billing, these documents can be produced or needs to be produced as a proof of the payment or proof of billing. So maintenance of records also helps during audit of construction projects at any point of time. This document helps to defend any claims such as liquidated damages or false claims or violations of any guidelines by the authorities or clients. Next, records at a construction site. The following are the various records that need to be maintained at a construction site. The first one is drawings. First and foremost important record to be maintained on site are the working drawings approved by the clients and design engineer, which is based on all the construction activities that will take place on the site. So there are different types of drawings required for construction. Some of the basic required drawings are mentioned here. Architectural drawings, structural drawings, plumbing and sanitary drawing, electrical drawing and finishing drawing, etc. Next, contract agreements. Contract agreements are documents including all sets of drawings, which includes amendments, copy of approval of municipality, corporation, or urban development authorities needed to be maintained at the construction site 
till the completion of construction project. These documents provide permission and guidelines for all activities carried out at the construction site. So time and progress charts of CPM chart is the third one. This chart helps in tracking the construction activities from time to time and helps in effective planning, scheduling, and controlling the construction project activities. This chart needs to be approved from the concerned authorities. Next, work orders book. So all the orders given by the clients to the contractor's needs are to be maintained with serial numbers, signatures, and dates. These orders should be specific for works, and this order should also have a compliance column, that is completion column. Next, works diary or worker's diary. So works diary of a construction project should indicate contract agreement number, name of the work, amount of contract, date of commencement of work, and date of completion and extension, extension of time granted. all the relevant details that are need to be entered in the works diary. So this diary serves as an authentic record, genuine record, and following are the details that need to be entered in the diary with due care. First one, the weather at the site, daily weather at the site. Second, important materials that are brought to the site daily with their approximate quantity, types of transport working at site, types of tools and plants being used at site, important items of work completed and passed on the particular date, and visits of VIPs and their remarks to the site, if any. So you can give your attendance now in the chat box. Thank you for this lecture. And the remaining part of the lecture will continue in our next class. Thank you. By diaries, daily record sheets, job hacks, site field reports. Whatever your company, client, or subcontractor calls them, the importance of keeping site records cannot be underestimated when working on a construction project. Whatever level your company sits at any given project, be it the client, principal contractor, tier one, or tier two. Before we explore site records, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification button to get alerts when we upload new content. Let us all take a look at what a site record is and the type of information it should contain. As the name suggests, it's a record that should be kept daily by a qualified person employed by your company. This could be a supervisor, site engineer, site manager, or site agent that should detail site activities and occurrences, details of the work carried out, including as much information as possible. This can include measurements, quantities, volume of material used, and the like. It should also include explanations and reasons of any delays occurred and any issues encountered. Members of workers present on site, specifically what plant and equipment was in use, and also material deliveries. Keeping detailed site records is important for the following reasons. They can be used for your own protection in disputes with your customer or subcontractors. Site records can be used as evidence of site activities in the court of law. Record keeping in construction projects helps you get a clearer insight into what happened on site. Perhaps most importantly, they are invaluable in providing backup to applications, particularly for actual cost contracts, and are one of the most effective ways to fight against an attempted contra charge and to also combat potential disallowed costs by clients. If you want to learn more about disallowed cost, why not check out our Disallowed Costs Explain video? Simply click the link in the description below. Matron, a commercial hub to your business. But before we begin, let's have a look at an incident. Here's Max, an assistant project manager who looks tense and is pacing around the room. Then Jack, a project manager who works with him, walks into the room and asks him, 
quite as he seems to tense. To which Max replies, he is facing difficulty in estimating the budget. Jack responds, it might be because he is not planning the project properly. Jack reassures Max and begins to tell him about project planning. So today, we will be learning about what is project planning and check out the fundamentals of project planning. Then we will see why project planning is so essential for a project to be successful. After that, we will check the tools for project planning and finally, we will have a look at the steps for project planning. So without any further ado, let's begin with what is project planning. Project planning is the second step or phase of the project life cycle. Project life cycle has five different phases from initiation to closure. Today, we will be learning about this phase that comes immediately after initiation in which the project plan is documented and further requirements are defined. Project planning includes the following things. The first and foremost thing is describing the objectives or outputs we are expecting the project to yield. Second, we have is the elaboration of the scope to make sure what the project is all about and what all can be expected from the project. The third step we have is forming a schedule. This schedule is important to run or perform different tasks of a project, each task having its own start date and end date. This helps the project to finish in the scheduled time and limit. Lastly, we have making and generating progress reports in which all that went during the tenure of the project is documented. This helps in evaluating the project and helps in the forthcoming projects. Now, let's have a look at the project planning fundamentals. The first fundamental that we have is the determination of scope, cost and resources. The determination helps us in having a rough estimate for the time that is required to finish the project. It helps us in determining the number of people required and what should be their skill set. We can divide the project into smaller manageable sections and this is made possible with the help of work breakdown structure. The second fundamental refers to identifying the problem. There are several techniques by which we can collect information and discover issues. There may be several problems in a project and in that case several risks or issues are prioritized and the risk that requires immediate attention is dealt with first. Then comes identification of stakeholders. When we can identify the stakeholders, we can know who all will be affected and in what way. It helps us having a better understanding of the project. Stakeholders may be anybody. They may be the part of the project team or project managers or customers. They help during the project and contribute to its success. Then the last fundamental we will discuss is defining project objectives. A project plan is made keeping in mind the requirements of the project team and expectations of the stakeholders. The project team can meet the expectations of the stakeholders then only we can say that the project is successful. Now, when we know about project planning and its fundamentals, it's time to see why project planning is so important. Project planning reduces the cost and time of the project as every step is monitored and optimized in the best possible manner. Project planning increases employee satisfaction as every employee who is a part is engaged in the team for improved project performance. Project planning helps in the implementation of quality assurance as the output of every step is duly tested. Lastly, project planning helps in reducing project risk as planning helps to analyze, prioritize and deal with that risk. Moving on, let's have a look at the tools for project planning. The first tool that we have is a Gantt chart. Today, Gantt charts are one of the most popular project management tools. They help in tracking the status of the work at a particular time and their independencies on each other. Gantt charts help in showing different phases and steps involved in a project. The second tool we will talk about is critical path method or CPM. Critical path method helps in scheduling the project activities so that the project runs properly. The critical path method focuses on the longest stretch of dependent tasks and determines the time needed to complete them. The next tool is project evaluation and review technique or PERT chart. PERT provides a graphical representation of the project's timeline explaining the independencies of different tasks. This tool not only helps in making a schedule but also helps in coordinating with all the team members. The fourth tool we will check is work breakdown structure. Work breakdown structure is a very common tool that makes it possible for the team to break its work into manageable sections. Work breakdown structure is a step-to-step -step process that helps in completing the project efficiently. The last tool we will see is project documentation. Project documentation is an integral part of the project life cycle. Project documentation helps in understanding the mistakes done during the project and more importantly provides guidelines for the upcoming project. Now, when we know about different tools for project planning, it becomes essential that we know the necessary steps of project planning. There are seven steps in project planning. Let's have a look at each of them in detail. The first step is identification of stakeholders. As we have discussed, stakeholders could be anybody. They could be a part of the team or a project manager or a customer. When we identify stakeholders, we can find out the expectations and requirements that are to be looked upon in this project. 
This gives us a clearer picture of the project and helps in establishing the project scope. So the next step we have is defining the project scope. This helps in determining a list of specific project goals and deliverables that are to be achieved during the course of the project. After we have defined the project scope, it is time to set project objectives and prioritize them. The initial ideas that were there before are now elaborated and final steps to complete the project are defined. In the next step, the deliverables are determined. After all, project deliverables are the only reason why the project is being created. This step involves finding out what these deliverables will be and the deadlines of their delivery. Then the step that comes into picture is creating a project schedule. The project schedule refers to the guidelines when a particular task is to be started and when it is supposed to end. This helps in monitoring the growth of the project and later helps in generating progress reports. The next step is the step of risk analysis. This step plays an extremely important role in the success of the overall project. It helps in identifying the risk, prioritizing them and taking steps to limit them. The last step in project planning is to generate progress reports. In this step, we update the stakeholders about the project growth and it is done so that all the concerned team members can have a look at the progress of the project. After all this information, Max thanks Jack for the explanation and looks forward to plan projects within the budget and of better quality. With this, we have come to the end of this session. I hope you people found it informative and helpful. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more on Simply Learn. Hey guys, welcome to Civil Mentor. In this video, role and responsibilities of civil science. At engineer and construction. So let's get started. Roles and responsibilities of a civil site engineer depends on the nature of construction works in a project and involves various activities such as quality control and reporting. As the activities carried out in construction industry is highly dynamic in nature. Different decisions and actions have to be carried out unexpectedly. These sudden actions are mostly carried out by the site in charge or the civil site engineer at construction site. This means that the roles and responsibilities of a civil site engineer is not specific for every construction site. These changes based on the activities and site conditions of the project. But in brief, the site engineer must possess certain basic roles and responsibilities for the execution and completion of the project. The site engineer should possess basic knowledge about the practical construction procedures at site, along with the details of how they are planned. This idea of planning and coordination will help him to have proper execution of the activities at the site with desired performance. A site engineer is very essential for a construction project. The responsibilities of a site engineer are wide, as he must provide sufficient advice and supervision when there are any technical issues. The responsibilities that is put on a site engineer in construction is mentioned briefly in this video. Number one, construction site responsibilities. 
The site engineer is the person who spends most of his time at the construction site compared with other managers or designers. Site engineers are updated daily about the coming day's design and activities based on which he implements them at site. The top members of the construction organization get a clear picture about the daily activities happening at the site through the site engineer. Number two, traveling. The site engineers are supposed to move from one site to another for any special needs based on the size of the project or the number of projects. He must also be required to reach with the procurement of resources to get the materials as for the correct specifications if any discrepancies happen. This means every sector of activity, say it's design, materials, or execution, the site engineer has the role of advice. Number three, technical activities. Site activities, like establishment of the level and the survey control, which is required for the control of contracts, must be performed by site engineer in required conditions. The works have to be set out as per the contract drawings. This requires checks at regular basis on the construction site. The records maintained have to be accurate and they have to satisfy with the organizational and the legal requirements. The site engineer has to face any unexpected difficulties raised from the technical side at any point of time. He must study the problem and resolve it in the most efficient manner as possible. Number four, preparation of reports and schedules. The site engineer is the one who have to ensure that the site have adequate resources to complete the tasks. This is conducted by having procurement schedules for the jobs carried out and liaise with the procurement department regarding the same. A report on the future works to be carried out at site are prepared and produced by site engineers two weeks ahead. This is carried out in conjunction with the site agent. The site engineer is responsible for keeping site diaries and the respective sheets for allocation. Number five, site engineer for health and safety. For highly dangerous work site, the site engineer will take up the role of safety engineer. He has to ensure that the work carried out by the workers and other related activities are as per the safety regulation of the respective state or area. Every construction organization must possess a safe working culture and practice. Its implementation and practice of following is supervised by the site engineers. There may be other safety health officers for the organization, but ensuring safety is a common need. Number six. Quality assurance by site engineer. As we know, quality is a parameter that have to be kept in practice from the initial stage of planning to the end of the project. The major issues with design and documentation can be corrected during the construction by the site engineer based on advice from the structural engineers. Any undesirable activities in construction brings high loss of quality and money. Number seven, communication and leadership duties. As the site engineer have to know the technical details from the above levels and make it in practice at the site, he must be efficient enough to coordinate the information that is communicated. He must take up the detail from the higher levels accurately and pass them to the below contractors, supervisors, or labor workers. It's not how efficiently you as a site engineer understand the idea, but it's on how you convey it to your sub workers. This will reflect to have the need for a leadership quality to convey and make the workers do the work. That's all for today. See you in the next video.